Imagine this. India, a country with one of the largest railway networks on the planet, importing train wheels from China, a country it often sees as a rival. Not just a small order, either. In 2022, India bought 39,000 wheels from China's Taiwan heavy industry for $21 million. That's 68% more expensive than a similar deal from Ukraine two years earlier. On paper, it sounds strange. India builds satellites, fighter jets, even nuclear reactors, yet it needs to rely on another country for something as seemingly simple as train wheels. So why? This isn't just a story about wheels. It's about supply chains, politics, and the gap between national ambition and real-world industrial capability. And as we follow this journey, you'll see how a simple metal circle became the center of a high-stakes race between vision, capability, and necessity. To understand why India needed to import these wheels, we have to look at the bigger picture, the state of its railways. India's railway network spans over 68,000 kilometers and moves more than 8 billion passengers every year. That's like transporting the entire population of the world plus a few billion more. But much of this system is old. Tracks, bridges, signaling systems, even some train coaches date back decades. And the strain is showing. In just 2021, over 18,000 railway-related accidents occurred. And in the past five years, more than 100,000 people lost their lives in railway incidents. The demand is growing too with India's economy expanding and millions wanting faster, safer, and cleaner trains. Modernization isn't a simple upgrade. It's like rebuilding a plane while it's mid-flight. Every component, down to the very wheels, must meet precise, high-quality standards to keep the system safe and efficient. Enter the Vanda Bharat Express, India's pride and its answer to high-speed rail. Branded as made in India, these sleek semi-high-speed trains were designed to redefine rail travel with GPS-based info systems, automatic doors, modern braking technology, and bio-vacuum toilets. But here's the catch. While the trains are assembled in India, around 70 to 80 percent of their core components are still imported. The high-speed forged wheels, crucial for stability at top speeds, are a key example. Think of it like building a supercar locally. You might assemble it at home, but if your tires or engine come from abroad, it's not fully self-reliant. India has world-class engineers, but producing these wheels requires ultra-pure steel, advanced forging techniques, and microscopic precision. Even a tiny flaw could be disastrous at speeds of 160 to 200 kilometers per hour. This gap between ambition and capability created a real challenge for the rollout of hundreds of new trains. Back in 2021, India thought it had a clever solution to the wheel problem. Instead of relying on China, it signed a deal with Ukraine's Interpipe, one of the few companies in the world capable of producing high-speed rail wheels to India's strict specifications. The plan was for 30,000 wheels, enough to keep the ambitious Vandabharat rollout on track. But then February 2022 happened. Russia invaded Ukraine. Suddenly, factories were near conflict zones, ports were closed, and supply chains collapsed. India wasn't just delayed, it was stuck. Brand new train carriages were ready to roll but had no wheels. This exposed a deeper truth. Global supply chains are fragile. A war thousands of kilometers away shouldn't paralyze infrastructure in South Asia, but it did. Faced with this urgent crisis, India had only one option left, turn to China. Now you might wonder, why didn't India just make the wheels itself? After all, it has huge steel plants, skilled engineers, and a growing manufacturing sector. The answer lies in the extraordinary complexity of high-speed rail wheels. These aren't simple metal rings. They spin at speeds of 160 to 200 kilometers per hour, carrying hundreds of tons over tracks that may twist, curve, or face extreme weather. One tiny flaw could trigger a derailment.
The steel has to be ultra pure, with oxygen levels below 0.00002%, forged, heat treated, and ultrasonically tested to ensure it can endure millions of stress cycles. Globally, only five countries consistently meet these specs, China, Germany, Japan, France, and Italy. India tried, pushing domestic firms like RINL, but results were inconsistent. Some wheels failed quality checks, others couldn't be produced at scale. Precision engineering takes decades of experience, and time was a luxury India didn't have. That left India facing an uncomfortable reality turned to China. After the Ukraine deal collapsed and local production couldn't meet deadlines, India had little choice. In 2023, it signed a deal with China's Taiwan Heavy Industry to import 39,000 train wheels, even agreeing to pay 1.68% more than what Ukraine had offered. Pride aside, speed and reliability mattered most. New Vanda Bharat trains were sitting idle, carriages just waiting for wheels. China, cautious from past experiences with Indian projects, required 60% payment up front before shipping. The move sparked political backlash, with critics calling it hypocrisy. Make in India slogans on trains running on Chinese wheels. Yet strategically, it was a calculated compromise. Sometimes progress demands uncomfortable partnerships, especially when your domestic capacity isn't enough to meet urgent national goals. Pragmatism had to override pride. Even Japan, long seen as India's reliable partner, showed cracks. The Mumbai Ahmedabad High Speed Rail, India's first bullet train and a flagship Indo Japanese project, was announced in 2017 with a generous $12.8 billion loan at near zero interest. It was supposed to start operations by 2023 to 2024. Yet in 2025, Trains aren't running, and the new estimate for completion is 2028, with costs ballooning to over $30 billion, more than double the original budget. Delays came from land acquisition, regulatory hurdles, and local opposition. But a 2023 scandal exposed deeper issues. A Japanese supplier falsified quality data on railway wheels meant for India. Even the trusted partner couldn't guarantee delivery. The lesson was clear. In large infrastructure projects, reliability is fragile and international partnerships, no matter how friendly, can carry hidden risks. In this light, China, uncomfortable as it was politically, became the only practical solution to keep India's train ambitions moving forward. So, what does all this mean for India's future? The country, the world's most populous democracy, with a huge industrial base, ended up importing tens of thousands of train wheels from its biggest geopolitical rival. At first glance, it seems like a contradiction, or even a defeat. But dig deeper, and it tells a story of strategic pragmatism. In today's interconnected world, progress isn't always patriotic. It's often practical. India didn't choose China because it wanted to. It chose China because it had to. These wheels weren't just about trains. They were about keeping momentum, avoiding costly delays, and ensuring the Vanda Bharat project stayed on track. True self-reliance isn't doing everything alone. It's knowing when to build, when to borrow, and when to buy smartly. India's choice reflects a mature understanding. Sometimes independence comes through strategic interdependence, not isolation. So, what can we take away from all of this? India's deal with China isn't a story of weakness. It's a lesson in pragmatism. National progress isn't about pride alone, it's about results. The real insight is that strategic decisions often require choosing the uncomfortable path today to unlock long-term gains tomorrow. Self-reliance doesn't mean complete isolation. It means making smart choices about when to depend on others and when to invest domestically. India's wheels with China are a perfect example. They keep the trains and the nation's ambitions moving forward, even when the tracks ahead are uncertain. If this story made you think about the balance between independence and interdependence, drop your thoughts in the comments.
And if you want more deep dives into infrastructure, geopolitics, and global strategy, hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. The world is moving fast, and understanding the why behind the what has never been more important. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.